My name is Ananya and I'm going to be going over chain rule with derivatives. So this is the textbook definition of chain rule and it basically just says that the function f of g of x is equal to the derivative of f times g of x times the derivative of g of x. So you use chain rule when you have an expression raised to a power. This will make more sense when we look at some examples. So the first example is y equals x squared minus 4x to the power of 2. So in this sort of situation, the first thing you should do is bring the exponent to the front of the equation to be a coefficient and decrease the original power by one. So what this is saying is taking this two up here and bringing it to the front of the expression. This is the original expression. So you're gonna do the two from the exp exponent times the original expression and two minus one, you have to decrease the power of one after you bring it to the front. So it would be two minus one, which is one, which is why there's a one over here. And you have to keep the inside function the same, which is why the x squared minus 4x is carried down over here. And the third step is to multiply the derivative of the inside function. So this is the derivative of x squared minus 4x. The derivative of x squared minus 4x is 2x minus 4. So then you would just continue to simplify this further and further to get this. So just to like recap what you do, the first thing you do is you take the exponent and you bring it to the front as a coefficient. Then you reduce the exponent of the original equation by one, and then you multiply the whole thing by the derivative of the inside function. So in the terms of inside and outside functions, the x squared minus 4x is the inside function, and then the raised to the power of 2 is the outside function. For our next example, we have 4x plus 2 to the power of 8. So for this one, again, you take the exponent and bring it to the front. So you have 8 times the inside function raised to the power of 7 because you have to keep the inside function the same and reduce by one in the exponent. And then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is four x plus two and the derivative of four x two is four. So then you would just multiply and simplify to get 32 times four x plus two to the seventh. So chain rule, you have to use it when you have a power because obviously for four x two plus two to the eighth, you can expand it and multiply 4x plus 2 eight times, but that's a hassle, which is why chain rule is there to make our lives easier when we're trying to take derivatives. Example three is trying to find the derivative of the function um, y equals the square root of 9x squared plus four. So in this and square root problems, you try to get rid of the square root and use exponents instead. So the root, the square root of 9x squared plus 2 is the same thing as 9x squared plus 4 to the 1 half power. Sorry, I said 2, I mean 4. Uh, so this up here is the same as this down here. So what you would do is you would just do the same thing we've done for the last two examples. You take this exponent up here, the 1 half, and you bring it to the front as a coefficient. Then you rewrite the inside function, and the, next, the new power is going to be 1 half minus 1, which is negative 1 half. And you're going to multiply the whole thing by the derivative of the inside function. So in this case, the 9x squared plus 4, this is the inside function. And the square root itself is going to be the outside function, which is why the derivative is 18x. So the derivative of 9x squared plus 4 with no square roots is 18x. So then you would just multiply and simplify and have your roots rationalize and have positive exponents always to get this down here. Next, we have example four, sine to the seventh times four x. So this expression is the same, or this equation is the same as saying y is equal to sine four x to the seventh power. So when you have these kind of trig functions that are raised to this power, what you're gonna to wanna to do is bring this seven out and score the entire thing. Then you're gonna follow the chain rule rules. You're gonna do the seven, the exponent, bring it to the front. So you have seven times the original inside function. You keep the inside function the same. You multiply, or no, you, sorry, you, you have the exponent, you bring the exponent to the front, you keep the inside function the same and you reduce the exponent, the original exponent, the seven up here by one. So you have seven from up here, you have the sine four X from the original function and you have six because seven minus one is six. You're gonna multiply by the derivative of the inside function. In this case, the inside function is sine four X and the outside function is the raised to the power of seven. So the derivative of sine four X is cosine four X times four. And then you would just simplify, you would 
put together your constants and you would have 28 times sine 4x to the power of 6 times cosine 4x. This is our last example. We have y equals secant x to the fourth as our expression. So the first thing you're going to want to do is do y is equal to secant x to the fourth as a whole thing. And then you're going to take the exponent up here and bring it to the front as a coefficient and keep the inside function secant x the same and reduce the original exponent 4 by 1. So you have 3. And you're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is secant times 10. So then you would just simplify and you get 4 times secant to the fourth x, 10x. It's secant to the fourth because you have you have this secant over here and this secant over here, and this is to the power of 1. So when you're combining these two, you would just do 3 plus 1 to get the 4 up here. Also, for this uh, problem, this 4 should be right here. This 4 should be moved right here instead of outside because this actually changes the meaning of the problem. And that's it for a chain rule with derivatives.